Hi, I'm Tom, and 24 years ago, this absolute mad lad had no idea that one day he would build his dream Warhammer army. Well, little Thomas, today is that day. When I first discovered Warhammer 24 years ago, I fell in love with the Eldar, specifically the Wraith units from the craft world Iandan. It was my dream to own one of these Wraith armies. Mechanised robots inhabited by the ghosts of fallen space elves who are on the brink of extinction and fighting for survival. How cool. Alas, at the time, most of the army was metal and I was quite poor. I even ended up having to sell my army when I was older as I needed the money. Well, cut to 24 years later. All of these models are now in plastic, they are discounted in army boxes, it looks cooler, they invented Wraith Knights and now I have adult money. I bought a lot of them off eBay to save money and also bought a few new kits too. I ended up with 8 Wraith Knights. That's right, 8. I also acquired 6 Wraith Lords, 2 Wraith Seers, the Forge World Unit, 2 Spirit Seers and 35 Wraith Guard. In this video I'll show you how I painted it all and here's a sneak peek. Bibbidi bobbidi boop. They were all painted in a grim dark style, like they've been battling without rest for millennia. I've done separate guides on how I kitbashed all of the lords and knights, so please check out my other videos. The eight knights were all built to look unique. I made two wraith knight seers using the plumes from the webway gate kit, and kitbashed some large glaives to give them a spartan or trojan warrior look. These massive machines are one of the biggest wraith units in the lore and are inhabited by twins, one that is dead and in spirit form, and one that is alive piloting the machine in a psychic connection with its sibling. So dark and also super cool. I hated this one from my kitbashing video, so I took it apart and turned it into this. A different pose with all the weapons on one arm, like a Gundam model. Much better. This one is bracing to fire over the shield, This one has two wraith cannons on the one arm. I built this one like the wraith lords with the cannons over the shoulders and it bracing to fire. I also made two melee themed ones, one with dual swords and one with a sword and shield mid strike. My plan is for this army to be a living and evolving army. So each time I use it, if the unit died or was heavily damaged, I'll add more weathering if it made kills, I'll paint more gems to make it look more impressive. I also intend to get nameplates 3D printed for all the Wraith Knights and Wraith Lords. I'm going to get my Patreons to vote on what they think they should be called. Please let me know what you think of the kit bashing, the paint scheme, or even potential names in the comments below. What would you do differently? I'll get all the housekeeping out of the way. If you enjoy the video, give it a like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. If you want to support me further, check out my affiliate links in the description for Element Games or consider supporting me on Patreon. Right, on to the painting. I ensured when building that I didn't glue or attach arms, heads or weapons. This was to make it easier to paint. The armour would be yellow, the weapons would be blue and the helms would be blue. It makes it much easier to paint when they're not attached to the model. After the models were all built and posed, I added battle damage to them with cuts and scrapes. As the Eldar are armoured in Wraithbone, it should look different to traditional armour like on space marines or tanks. They wouldn't have any metal chipping, so scratches and dents give off that it is damaged in particular areas. I aim for areas like the knees, the shields and the chest. Anything that was going to be painted blue was placed on a lunchbox or a repurposed school ruler to make it easier to spray. And while I was painting, I had to call 999 because some people outside decided to attack each other with baseball bats. Right, back to the painting. I also washed a pack of baby wipes to remove any chemicals and let them dry out. 
The reason I'm doing this is that I'm making a marble effect over all the armour for the knights and the wraith lords. Once the wipes are dry, you stretch them out to make this webbing effect. Then place it over the armour and spray over the top. And it will make this marble effect based off the colour underneath. I've done a separate video guide on this as well. Right, off to the spray booth. I my garage with a chair and a sheet of cardboard. I use spray cans for the base colours for all the models. As I said, I've repurposed this school ruler. I've blue tacked all of the Wraith Guard heads down and their loincloths. Just give it a spray of blue over the top. When they're dry, I pick them off and put them in a can to stop the overspray getting to them. Now onto the night helms. For this, I used Rich Beauty Armour and Sunset Yellow. Make sure you shake all of your cans up thoroughly before you use them and test on the cardboard first. I sprayed all of the heads yellow. Then got the Retributor armor and I did spots. Just test it's working. I did random spots of gold over the yellow. As you can see here, the main colour is yellow, with a random bit of gold in there. Once it's dry, I remove them from the box, and put them into a, one of the lids. Then for the marble effect, so I've got my crack blue as the base colour, made a little stand for one of the heads. And then got some of my baby wipes which have got the webbing. I'll show you uh, closer up here. So, Put the baby wipe over, spray it with blue, and then immediately take it out of the baby wipe. If you leave it time to dry, all of the fibers will stick to the paint. So you need to remove it straight away. As you can see here, there's like a marble effect already. So this is too yellow, so I did another coat of blue. And this is how it came out. It's like a rich depth to the armour, making it look ancient, gold and yellow speckles. So I repeated that for all of the other heads. And on the Wraith Knight Seers, the two plumed ones, I've given them a shoulder pad in blue. All the others have yellow shoulder pads, so that's why the two are there. So that's the heads base coated. So back into the painting room. I somehow forgot one of the Wraith Lord heads. I don't know how, but I'll do that later. And this is what they look like. If you've got any stray fibers or hair, I just pick them off, come off quite easy. And then onto Techless Blue. Let's be quite thin. Baby wipe again. And I'm using an airbrush for speed here. Go over it with a thin coat and then again, remove the baby wipe straight away. I'd recommend wearing gloves so you don't leave fingerprints on it. I should have one on my other hand. There you go, there's like a lighter blue, dark blue fade. And on the other side, remove the baby wipe straight away. Got those little fibers you can pull off, but they won't, they're not deep in the paint. There you go, looking cool. Here's one of the other heads, this came out really well. I did all the other knight heads, all the wraith lords' heads, and the wraith seer heads. Right, for the Wraith Guard heads, these are too small to do the marble effect. 
So I sprayed them with Crag Blue and then did a Teclas Blue fade on the bottom. Then on to Amethyst Blue. This is for the glass or, or on the visors of the Wraith Knights and the Wraith Seers. So base coat that with the Amethyst Blue. There, so you've got the marble mottled effect and then the solid colour of the visor there. So then we're going to do a pink glow on the visor. So I use this ink and I'm aiming just for the centre here. Boop! Put a glove on. We'll test it before we go on the model. And then just a thin coat. And then what I'm doing here, I'm actually letting air out of the brush without pulling it back. So it's actually drying the paint. And then I'm applying another little bit of paint on top. You can actually use the airbrush to dry the paint. Oh, almost ruined the white there. So I did this on all of the helms. These Wraith Seer heads have got a, a bit of a weirder shape. There you go, so that's the white glow. And then did one by masking off the armour around the edges using pink tack, which is less sticky than blue tack. And use this fluorescent pink. I want it about that thin, like single cream. And then I'm doing a very thin layer, and again, I'm spraying it without letting paint out to dry the, la the layer I've just done. So I'm drying it there. Drying it, drying it. As soon as the glisten's gone, I add another bit of pink. Because this was very thin, I think I did three, three thin layers. And these ones, I didn't mask off. I just did them without the blue tack. But without the pink tack. And it gives like a OSL effect, like object source lighting. Like it's glowing onto the armor on the other side. Then onto the gold trim. So I use Retribute armor for the all the runes and gems that I wanted to paint. So the heads of the spirit seers. So I used it on the sort of inscription on the plume of the Wraith Knight Seers coining that phrase here, and also the sort of head crest of the Wraith Lords. This one's got really good mottling in. All starting to come together. I then use the grey paint to paint the underneath of the heads, and later I'll show you in the, the panels of the armour. And use Rackland Flesh Shade over the gold. It gives it like this rich old gold look. That's the head base colours done. Then onto the yellow armour. So I packed up all the models. You need a mask. Always wear a mask when you're spraying anything. And some gloves. Oh, got you! Got him! And I use these Colour Forge colours, so Desert Sand, Ossified Earth, and the Yellow. Desert Sand and Ossified Earth. So I'm giving them sort of like a really rough cover with the Desert Sand. I'm intentionally leaving some of the plastic grey. So like here on the on that one I've just done the feet, you can see a very very sparse covering. It's intentional. So it's a rough covering all over. Doesn't matter if you miss any bits. Like here. Then onto the ossified earth, like a darker bone colour. 
and I'm aiming intentionally aiming for the spots I've missed, so the grey spots going over them. Any bits I've missed, I'm going over this. So you've got the two colours that have covered the entirety of the armour. Then on to Wraithbone, so I did some spot highlights. So here on the end, it's still a bit grey, so and where there'll be lights so around the gems, done a bit of a white dot of colour. And then the same with the helms, a dash of gold all over. So just random spots of gold. You might be thinking, what the hell is he doing? But you'll see, it looks cool. Then on to the sunset yellow. So this is the main base colour. So I'm doing the marble effect again. So I laid the model down. Placed the baby wipe over the top. Sort of held it with a glove. And you definitely want to wear gloves because you don't want to leave fingerprints on this. It will smudge the paint. And spray it yellow. Then when you peel it off. And peel it off straight away, don't let it dry. You can see it leaves behind a sort of yellowy mottled colour. I think you might have to do more than one. I think I did two passes on each bit. This isn't this isn't the finished product, so this is the sort of base colour for the marble effect. There you go on the shield looks pretty cool. So all the weapons were painted McCrag blue. You can see some of them there I've already stuck down so it's silly Thomas I shouldn't have stuck them. The Wraith Guarder but because they were on eBay they're already glued in place. So these ones that haven't got heads of weapons they're intentionally not stuck together so it's easier to paint. So I did it on all the Wraith Lords as well. I haven't done the um, marble effect on the Wraith Guard, so I think it'd be too subtle on them. Right, so that's your sort of mixture of colours and yellow base colour. Bit of gold, yellow, cream, white. Some of the grey still showing through. Mismatch of like mottled marble colour. That's what I'm going for. So then I use contrast, so a Yandin yellow, and I mixed it with airbrush thinner. So one part contrast to three parts thinner, which was quite watered down. So on this shield here, you can see the white area. So I'm going over it with a just a thin layer of the contrast mix. And so the contrast is like a stain. So anything that's yellow will be darker. Anything that was cream or white or gold um, will look different to where the yellow hit it from the spray can. So it's quite hard to catch this on film, but in person you can definitely see there's a sort of mottled effect to the armor. So it, doing thin layers across all of the models. And I put one of the helms on just to see what it looks like. It's all starting to come together now. Really clear to show on this one. So yellow patches everywhere, cream, bits of bone colour, bits of gold, and then all over with the yellow. This is what it looks like when it's been base coated. So you can see there are patches of dark yellow and light yellow all over it. So that's all the yellow done. I then used the same grey from the helms to paint all of the sort of under armour. And the knee pits, ankles, sort of leg pits, um, the sort of webbing around the back and the vents bibbidi bobbidi boop so it's on all the models 
and then use gold to highlight all of the sort of gem areas and runes like on the spirit seer the gems on the front of the wraith guard i might add a glow effect to these later i haven't all the wraith lords and wraith knights have these sort of big runes on the back of their armor and the sort of soul stone for the the twin on the wraith knights on the front the twin soul is then i use the reichland Fresh light, the Reichland flesh shade, flesh shade all over the gold again. And then I painted the weapons. I, I saw I'd done a painting guide on how I painted this wraith, this glaive. Um, and I'm doing the same thing for all of the weapons. So it starts off as McCrag blue, goes into Teclas blue, and then Temple Guard blue. And I did the same with a dry brush on this spirit seer. Starts off my quag blue, dry brushed techless, and then the temple guard blue. And then I did it on the robes as well, all the loincloths. This is one of the spirit seers I've kit bashed from a far seer. But then you can see on the cloak, it's quite obvious. I'd recommend getting yourself one of these artis opus series of paintbrushes that they're, they're really good so this is the finished effect on the weapon so you've got the dark blue to a light blue to a very light blue I did it on the shields as well the wraith guard and all their loincloths and also on the axes then all of the wraith shields Glimmer shield or whatever, I forgot what they're called now. I um I did the same mottled effect on the helms. So I had to use blue tack on the uh, pink tack on these to mask off the arm and then paint the shield with a baby wipe again. So this is the weapons done and shields done and helms done. Here's all the Wraith Guard weapons. All the heavy weapons for the Wraith Lords. So also where they've got buttons, I did use the same pink from the helms as a little spot of colour. The gold around all the gems and handles. And again on the, the sort of the, the rune on the on the shield. I've done a guide on this as well. Then on to decals. So I've put a few on, so I've done the, the infinity circuit on all of the helms and then the Ayandin symbol on the loincloths. It's so easy to use decals, I'll show you how. So just cut them out, boobity boobity boop. Throw them into a little pot of water. Then you fish out the decal with a brush. And then you just sort of place it down on the model. If you're using a wet brush, you can move it around before it dries. You've got ages before this dries, so you can take your time. So you just position it, and here I just line it up, make sure it's in the center. Put the Yandan symbol on the loincloth. Just place it and let it dry. So these won't be conforming to the shape that they're on. They might be, so sort of, you see here, they're a little stuck up and not in all the crevices. Especially on curved surfaces. So, so what you do is you get some microsol, which is, it basically dissolves the decal a little bit, makes it soft, and then it conforms to the shape it's on. So once the decals are dry and adhered to them, you go over them with Microsoft. Let's give a massive thanks to Andrew Hicks, legend, for his website. It, he's got a guide on all of the runes um, of the Eldar on the basically anything that's on a decal sheet and translates what they all mean. 
Um, I picked out loads of cool ones and I was like, oh, I'll put this on it and then realise it meant nothing about what I was putting on it. But like getting a Chinese or Japanese ta uh, tattoo and it's saying cheese and you thought it meant love. So his website's amazing. Eldar.arhix.co.uk, I'll put it in the notes. Then I did a test base, so I used some cork board, two different types, some little rocks and some sort of sand and coarse rocks. These sort of elven palace, or elven statue things from Scriber Miniatures, really cool. Some dark terrain and light dry crackle effects from AK Interactive, which I had left over from a different project. And then I just built the cork up in stacks, made sure there's no straight edges, you sort of pull at the edges and make sure it look all crumbled. Throw some rocks on, some dirt and some crackle effects. And then position the knights. Because of this glaive I had to put quite a bit of height on this dude, but I think it looks very foreboding. And I've intentionally left space in between the legs on all of the knights because I might build some loincloths for them at some point. And as they're sort of fighting for their existence against the uh, Tyranids, I may add sort of slayed, slain Tyranid models to the bases. So this crackle effect here is flaked off, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cover them over. But to stop this, you can actually varnish the base first, so if you spray a varnish or any paint over the base first, and then put the crackle effect on, it won't flake off. So here I've done just a few, you can see I've varied what they look like. So I sprayed them all black, and then I dry brushed them with the same grey that I used on the armour. And then I've pinned all of the knight's uh, feet so that they fit into the bases and make them very sturdy and secure. That's how they'll sit. So then I matte varnished the entire army. So every single bit of the army, the armor, the weapons, everything. The reason for that is because I'm going to um, weather them now. So I use some of this Abtalung um, oil paint, this streaking grime enamel, and so what I do is it's been varnished, so I spray over the entire thing with the streaking grime. So it looks like this. You let it dry so it's no no longer shiny, which is about I don't know thirty minutes. Let it dry. It's not fully dry. It's still wet, but dry enough. So no longer glistening, and then it's and then it's dry. Then use some cotton buds or Q-tips and some white spirit in a glass dish. This is an old cheesecake. And then, if you can, you can use them dry. So you can use the cotton bud dry and just smudge it and wipe it away, or you can dab it in and just dab the enamel away. The the white spirit. So it breaks down and it sort of dissolves the enamel and where, on areas where you want it be, to be clean. So because it's it sort of spreads out to the edges. So around this helm when it's dry, it will have a sort of dirty look and the middle will be a lot cleaner. Which is exactly the look I'm going for. So I did this all over the armor. So I used the uh, sort of white spirit over all of it. Clean it up as much as you want. You want some dirty patches some clean patches. Like on the shield here where the, the plates overlap you could leave some dirt there. It will give us an effect of weathered ancient armour. And this is it after it's done. So it's in all the crevices around all the gems, it's in all the weathered and damaged bits. On the weapons I made sure I cleaned the blades so some someone rightfully pointed out in one of the comments, Eldar weapons, it's like a lightsaber in my head. So it would burn off any dirt on the edge. Here you go, here's the 
the base color with the and then one with the grime on the right so it makes a huge difference darkens it down makes all the scratches and dents clear i then made a wash with the oil paint so it's so simple just emptied the dish out put a blob of the oil in some squirts of the of white spirit and then a crappy old brush and mixed it up and then you want it to be about that consistency so like single cream same as i mix paint in the airbrush i then painted this all over the armor panels and there's, I did this um, sparingly on a few of them, and on this one, I think, because it's, it's sort of like the leader of the army, I did it a lot more. So, sort of let the you don't have to let this oil dry. I've got an old brush, dabbed it in some white spirit, and streaked down, so that I'm going down towards the floor. So what it does, it sort of makes the oil collect in like a stream, path of least resistance. You have all these streaks all over the armor. And then for the base, so we've got the black and gray. I've done it on this one, but I, I, I wanted some more powder on it. So you get this pigment powder, a dry brush, dip it in the powder, dip, dip it in the powder, and then put it all over the armour, the, the base, like everything really. But you want to still have some black and the grey showing. This powder, it, it's basically paint without liquid in, without the, the medium in. It's just the, the colour from the paint. I always do it on a piece of paper so you can catch the excess, put it back in the tub, and then I use the brush to smear it all over. And it's actually sticking to some of the oil paint from before. I then used a black oil, and same as I did before, but this is spare and easy. You use a smaller brush, you just dip it, make an oil wash, and you just dip and do a panel line so it goes around all of the panels, all the edges, all the cracks, and it makes a huge difference. This one on the left has got grime on, the one on the right has got black oil on. It just really makes the all the gem all the gems and all the soul stones pop. I've done it on the spirits here. Really makes a difference. And that's the army finished. So 24 years later, I finally got the army of my dreams. It was well worth the effort. So let me know in the comments what you think. Have you painted your dream army? Have you got your dream army? What would you have in your dream army? very therapeutic doing this it was uh, relaxing but the fact it's going to be an evolving changing army is even cooler to me so every time I fight they're going to get more damaged and have more gems painted and eventually they'll, they'll be covered in gem or it, all the soul stones will be painted so here's some detailed pics of them a special thanks to my latest patreon supporters Jared Trulock and Michael Letoris. See what he did there. Hail to you, champions. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. And as I said earlier in the video, I'm going to get some nameplates printed for all of my knights and lords, and my patrons are going to help me decide what they're called. If you want to support me further, please consider supporting me on Patreon or by using my affiliate links in the video description for Element Games. Comment and subscribe, and check out my other videos. Thank you for watching.
let me know what you think.